<clears throat> good, you know, good morning, Unity friends, family that can't be here, that is watching us on your iPads or computers or telephones. We have about eight minutes before our service starts. So if you're planning on coming over here, step on it. Other than that, you might be late. But if you can't come, well, we're going to have a great service today. This music, meditations, and the five principles. So in the meantime, I'm just going to do a little music here for you. While you are ready. telephone.
welcome song. You're gonna talk? watching on whatever you're watching on. <laughs> so this is a brand new month. We're having a brand new congregational joy song. I'm choosing heaven today. Unfortunately, we don't have the words on the screen, but it's really simple because it's very repetitious. And the only word you got to remember is love. No, it's heaven, love, abundance, compassion and back to heaven. Five verses. It's the only word basically that changes. You'll get the hang of it real quick. Just, okay. just take a big breath and lift up your spirit. And... I'm choosing heaven today. I'm choosing heaven today. I am walking the road of heaven right now. I'm choosing heaven Good morning and welcome. 
Happy to see all of you. I'm Patty Carlson. I serve on the board. Last month, we embraced the power of understanding. Today, as it is August 1st, the power for the month of August is will. And by the way, the color is silver. So today's service will be a little different. It's going to be a reflective service. And, we're, and our hope is that you will ask yourself some very important questions about the unity principles, which are listed in full here right by the candle. Hopefully, by asking yourself the questions and getting answers, you, it will lead you to greater understanding. We're going to give you time after each principle to listen for those answers, because there'll be a little meditative music provided by our music team. Now, Marty Mahalko will give our opening prayer, followed by our chaplain, Charlotte Hadley, who will read the daily word. Good morning. My name is Marty. I'm blessed to be a member of your board of trustees. And I ask you to join me in our opening prayer. We take a breath, and become present in this moment, this sacred moment. It is through spiritual understanding that we move into thy will be done. Thy will be done in and through this service. And we bless all that have come together to be of service and who are here and watching. For we are a unity family. And we say thank you. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Good morning all, and I am Charlotte Hadley. I am the chaplain for today, and so if anybody would like to have confidential prayer, I will be available in our chaplain's corner after service. And this morning what I'd like to start with is our affirmation for a new minister, and I do believe that the more people that do the affirmation, the more power we have. So I would like us to say it together. I'll start off and then you can repeat after me, please. So together we affirm and give thanks. So together we affirm and give thanks for the inspirational, energetic, and innovative minister, for the inspirational, energetic, and innovative minister that we know is on their way to us now that we know is on the way to us now. Thank you. And the daily word for today is radiance. The Christ presence within is my radiant source of good. On a clear day, when a straight cloud passes across the sun, I notice the suddenly diminished light. Then looking up, I see brilliant rays of sunshine surrounding the cloud. Instead of hiding the sun, the cloud helps me see and appreciate the sun's radiance. As the sun lights the earth and it's the source of its energy, the Christ, the divine presence within me is my light and the source of everything that I need in order to live joyfully. When, like a passing cloud, an obstacle or challenge along my path may seem to dim my Christ light, I respond by looking up, by raising my point of view. I am assured and strengthened knowing that the divine radiance is shining as brilliantly as ever. No cloud can dim the divine light in me. And from John 1, 5, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. So let's repeat the affirmation together. The Christ presence within, Christ is my radiant source of good. Is my radiant source of good. And thank you. Thank you, Charlotte. You're welcome. And Marty. 
So today our meditation will actually be part of the lesson, so it's coming. As you may or may not know, Unity was founded by Charles and Myrtle Fillmore 132 years ago. These two amazing spiritual truth seekers studied the life of Jesus Christ and his teachings. They also studied all religions and came to the understanding that there is power in prayer, even to heal using mind over matter. Myrtle herself healed in two years of tuberculosis using the statement, I am a child of God and therefore I do not inherit sickness. Charles and Mildred, I don't, I don't know why I call her Mildred, her name is Myrtle. <laughs> Charles and Myrtle Fillmore <laughs> encouraged unity of all denominations, of science and religion, of God and man, and of people with one another. About 30 years ago, the Fillmore's great-granddaughter, Connie Fillmore Basie, an ordained unity minister, summarized the unity teachings into five essential points, and they have been used ever since. Today, we are going to ask some questions about these principles and how they relate to our lives. In their briefest form, the five unity principles are God is, I am, I think, I pray, I live. Our first reader is Leslie Hypet, and she will explore the first unity principle, which will include our meditation. <coughs> Thank you, Patty. Good morning. Good morning. I am so happy to be talking about the first principle because guess what? It's the most important one. If you think about the five principles as two plus three, it will help you to understand that the first two, God is, I am, is the basis of all unity. And the other three give us ways in which we can live it. So let me ask you this question. What is your name for God? When I was little, I thought of God as Father, Mother, God. The name that we give to the Almighty Presence, Sacred Oneness, really determines our relationship. So if you think about the difference between someone thinking of God as father, a judgmental father, but then you add father, mother, there's that softening. And then as I've gotten older and hopefully more wise, I have added sacred oneness, loving presence, and it's made such a difference. Jesus said, the Father and I are one. Rabbi Kushner reminds us the first mystery is simply that there is a mystery. And I've always been so interested speaking to atheists who say, don't give me that God stuff. And I say, I won't give you the God stuff, but have you ever walked down a sidewalk and seen a little tiny green piece of flower or weed coming right out of the cement and they can, yeah, I have. That is a universal energy. So are you okay with that energy? And they go, yeah, that, that feels better. So let's not get bogged down in the words. But the thing I like about unity is that your word for God can be so different from mine. Your path might be different. And in unity, we accept all paths. Quantum theory author, physicist Max Planck, speaks of the conscious and intelligent mind. In scientific terms, the energy that lies under all creation. It is all that is. It is a field of pure potential. The ancient texts call that Sat Chit Ananda. The most ancient Hindu text, the Bhagavad Gita, 
describes this energy this way, and I actually thought this morning I should call my Hindu friend and say, I'm quoting the Bhagavad Gita this morning at Unity. The Bhagavad Gita says, by me is this entire universe pervaded. All things are in me and I in them. Know that as the mighty wind blowing everywhere rests in the sky, all created beings rest in me. And I heard someone go, oh, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty profound. Psalms 139 tells us we live and move and have our being in God. So do you trust that all sacred oneness? Do we see that the universe is in charge? It's an important question. What is my relationship to the creator? Matt Kahn reminds us in the universe always has a plan to let go and let God and that there is a divine plan, although we might not recognize it in the moment. Someone once said, when we change the way we see things, what we look at changes. On my mantle, I have a little tiny um, sign. It's a little wood sign, and it's at the base of a laughing Buddha. And it says, it's all good. And one time, my college roommate, Lisa, was visiting, and she walked in, and she said, Leslie, it's all good. No, it's not. <laughs> I started laughing, and I said, well, for me, it is. So imagine someone who starts the day with, it's all good, compared to somebody who starts the day with, no, it's really not all good. How would you change your life if you totally trusted? If, sorry, if you let go and just let God. Writer Henry Nowen explains, accept the mystery of being loved by the divine magnet. Once that happens, nothing is accidental, casual, or futile anymore. So now we're gonna move into our time of meditation. And prayer and meditation is a very, very important part and of our day, hopefully, because it gives us time to go within. I like to think of it as plugging your cell phone in to get recharged. So we'll have our meditation now. So just get comfortable. Take a nice, great, big, deep breath. We're so grateful for this time. We're so grateful for this beautiful space and this beautiful day where we connect with that oneness and breathing and relaxing. Relaxing our feet. Relaxing our hands. Allowing both of them feet and hands to just get a little heavier, no longer fighting gravity, relaxing. Bring your attention to your chest. Relax your chest, picturing that beautiful heart of yours. Become aware of your heartbeat. Think about the miracle of your heart beating. This universal energy beating your heart. And now bring your attention to your tongue. Relax your tongue on the floor of your mouth. Let this relaxation spread into your entire face. and smile, knowing that you are here by divine design. Celebrating your willingness to be one with God. And breathing. 
And now bring your attention to the area behind your eyes and see that area is a big, wide open field of consciousness. Beyond thoughts, beyond worries. And as we relax and we release anything that does not serve our highest good, we allow ourselves to, just for a few minutes, have amnesia about the past. All worries, all stories, just being in this present moment. The point of power is in the present moment. And breathing. And now we picture our soul star above our head, your special energetic star that has your name on it, shining brilliant light down all around you. Violet, pink, white, gold, and any other color that you want to see. Brilliant light all the way around you, providing this protective tube of safety. And now we let this light flow in to the top of our heads, all the way down through all of our energy centers. We see our bodies being filled with this healing light. And relaxing even more, going into that deep center within we recognize our true self as the wave is one with the ocean i am one with god and breathing and relaxing letting go and letting god and we know that god is love so we go into the silence and we feel God's love for just a moment. truth of who we are. We remember that same power, infinite mind, that made the galaxies, that made all the oceans, made me. I am so precious. I am so loved. I am so grateful. And then feeling our hearts opening, filling with love. We know that we have the power to make things better in this world. And so we picture Mother Earth, big, beautiful blue marble. And we send radiant love, compassion, healing, forgiveness to all sentient beings. We see Mother Earth held in a grid work of beautiful light. And now we know that everything we send out comes back to us. And we see and feel waves of love compassion, forgiveness, and healing coming to us in this moment. And we are willing to receive. We are so grateful. 
Now, if there's anyone or any situation that you're concerned about, picture them in the light. And let go and let God. Blessing them. Knowing the truth for them. That they or the situation is also one with God. And that no matter what it looks like, all is well. All is well and all manner of things shall be well. And now preparing to come back into the room. Feeling the radiant joy bubbling up in your heart. All that gratitude for this gift of this day, this body, this opportunity. And again and again, we say, thank you, God, sacred oneness, divine creator of all. Amen and amen. And now, Glenn Ferdinand will talk to you about the second principle. Good morning, Unity family. Good morning. The second Unity principle is human beings have within... Excuse me, let me start that again. I was going to try to correct it, but it's better to just start it again. Human beings have divinity within... And our essence is inherently good. When was the last time you knew you were divine? Pablo Casals asked this question. Do you know what you are? You are a marvel. You are unique. In all the world, there is no other exactly like you. So, who do you think you are anyway? Realize we have conversations with ourselves. We ask ourselves questions and then we answer ourselves. How do you talk to yourself? Do you forgive yourself when you make a mistake? A Nicaraguan priest once said, God, has been thinking of me since before I was born. For all eternity, God loves us more than we love ourselves. Maybe we need to remember that God loves us especially when we don't love ourselves. Linda Martella Witsit tells us in Divine Audacity, you only have to attune to your essential nature, which is goodness or godness, and follow its lead in all things. There's a story, it's been told many different ways, I'm sure we've all heard about it, about a high school basketball team from a very small school. Against all odds, they won time after time, playing better team after better team and bigger school after bigger school, when they finally made it all the way to the state finals. Then they lost in overtime to a last second shot by the opposing team. They were devastated. And they, of course, they left the court. They were walking very slowly. The coach came up to the team captain to thank him for all of his hard work and dedication during the summer to make everything possible that had just happened. And as he started to thank the tired player, the young man sadly said, we're losers. The coach stopped him, looked him squarely in the eye, and said, son, whatever you say about yourself is true. What do you say about yourself? What do 
we tell ourselves about who we are and how we are doing. Are you willing to look at yourself through the eyes of God? There will be a one minute meditation followed by Barbara Petrillo and the third principle. Good morning. Good morning. The third unity principle is we co-create with God with our thoughts. Are you an intentional creator? Most people have a difficult time controlling their thoughts, and many of us suffer from monkey mind, where we end up in places we would rather not be, thinking and expecting the worst. How do you stop your negative thinking so you can create the best for yourself? Ask yourself, why did this happen for me? The universe responds to our vibration and energy doesn't lie. Byron Katie in her book, Loving What Is, Four Questions That Can Change Your Life gives us four simple questions to monitor our thoughts. When a thought upsets us, we can take time to ask, is it true? Can I absolutely know it's true? How do I react when I think of it? What happens? Who would I be without that thought? In 1996, Byron Katie, after decades of depression, had an epiphany and saw that the reason for suffering is our thoughts. And the way out was through asking questions about our thoughts. Shakespeare said, nothing is either good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Proverbs 23, 7. The fourth unity principle.
Through prayer and meditation, we align with God. Charles Fillmore wrote, based on the first unity principle, God is good and ever present. Our prayer is to be centered in God and from this place, see things as right instead of trying to make things right. Unlike traditional religions who use the prayer of petition, dear God, please help me, um, more along the idea that God is a Santa Claus and will reward us if we're being really good and maybe ignoring us if we're not. In unity, we practice affirmative prayer, which allows us to rest in our oneness with God. We use affirmations and denials. An affirmation is a positive statement of truth. A denial can be used before an affirmation to clear negative thoughts or obstacles. A denial describes what appears to be happening, but does not give it power. Some examples of using a denial and then an affirmation are I am not material, I am spiritual. I release my fear about, <clears throat> excuse me, about not having enough, and you can fill in the blank. I release my fear about not having enough. And you can follow that with the affirmation, and I give thanks that all I need is coming to me now. It is so useful to repeat denials about the negative picture about how something looks until you don't feel them anymore. Think of this process as weeding the garden so the good stays and sprouts. I often tell people if you have a negative thought occurring and occurring, write it on a piece of paper and tear it up. Make room for that beautiful seed of truth. Join me now in affirming for yourself all that you truly are and have. With each sentence, silently repeat the words and then finish the sentence to yourself. I am. I am God's child. I am blessed. I am a bright light. My life is, my life is overflowing with joy. My life is fantastic. My life is so amazing. We'll try one third, last one, a third one. I have everything I could ever need, unlimited possibilities, challenges I'm learning from. So if for any of those sentence stems, something popped up that was negative, now you know that you can deny it and affirm the opposite, the truth. Notice how you feel when you use affirmations. We think about 70,000 thoughts a day, and I'm sorry to say about 90% of them are negative. So we have work to do. We have to stand at that door and monitor our thoughts. How would your life improve if you changed every negative thought into a denial and an affirmation? Meditation allows us to stop thinking and become the observer. It gives us time to notice our negative thoughts so we can take time to do our work using denials and affirmations. Meditation and prayer allows us to enter the silence and listen. We take time to work on our inner life and to ask, what is mine to do? And we listen. <laughs>
The fifth unity principle is we live the truth with our thoughts, words, and actions. It's all about living the truth we know. Do you walk your talk? Someone once said, what you are speaks so loudly, I can't hear what you say. Thaddeus Golis reminds us in The Lazy Man's Guide to Enlightenment that we are essentially energy and that our only real job is to control our energy with our thoughts, words, and actions. We expand our energy with love, gratitude, honesty, and understanding. And we contract our energy with fear, judgment, hatred, or jealousy. Ellen Devonport states in The Five Principles that living the truth is a challenge and poses some questions for us. Are you willing to live your truth? Surrounded by others who can seem to be negative? Are you willing to claim your abundance, knowing that we are the children of a lavish, loving presence? When we live the first four principles, service is the next step. Our daily lives are a direct reflection of our spiritual condition. My life is my message. Your life is your message. Are you sending the message you want to send? How do we stay immersed in the truth of our divine being? How do we love everyone? In James chapter 2, verse 26, we read, Faith without works is dead. We are here to make a positive difference. A wise woman, when asked the difference between heaven and hell, said that in hell, everyone is starving because the handle of their spoon is too long to feed themselves. And in heaven, the situation and the spoons are exactly the same, except everyone is feeding each other. Unity's five principles, our keys to spiritual, practical spirituality, are the guiding light along our journey in this experience. Let us use them for the highest good of ourselves and each other. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the music team. What a beautiful job you guys did with the meditation music. Excellent. Excellent. We had the opportunity to listen to them practice before it began. And it was, um, so we were, all, we were all meditated up before we even got up here. Uh, <clears throat> just a couple of announcements, too, as a matter of fact. The first is, um, I guess it's a reminder. You know, we have a Facebook page, and we do, uh, Unity Spiritual Center does do Facebook posts. And so what we're asking everyone out there, every Sunday we have approximately at over 100 people between online and also in the, in the church here, in the live setting, that uh, are experiencing uh, you know, our, our services. So if we could get everyone who's on Facebook to share the post, what happens is it, it spreads it out. It's just like a branch. So you, know, you have 20 people and they share it with their friends and then you have 40 people and possibly they share it. Before you know it, we have two, 300 people that have an opportunity to find out what's going on at Unity Spiritual Center. And it's very easy, it takes two clicks, right? Share and then okay, and then you're done. So what we ask you is that when you see these Facebook posts, uh, let's, let's, let's share them. So I'm gonna put a, let's see if we get 25, that's just a quarter of what we want. 
maybe 25 uh, shares this, this week. And uh, I'll let you know what happens next week. The other thing is that Sunday, we were, our last Sunday, we were very, very fortunate. We had special guest stars, or special guest musicians, I should say. Uh, we had four uh, musicians from the First Presbyterian Church of Vero Beach String Youth Orchestra that performed for us in the service, and they did a wonderful job. And that afternoon, we had a concert, and we had approximately 20 more of the members of the uh, FPC youth string orchestra that did a concert. It happened to be a fundraising concert. It didn't start out that way. It started out as a concert. And because they were leaving for Aspen, Colorado for the Aspen Music Invitational, <coughs> they needed some money. They needed additional money because of course they have to pay for their expenses and whatnot. And I said, okay, let's just do a fundraiser. Well, we were able to raise $3,500 for the FPC. <laughs> Thank you all who gave. It was a wonderful, wonderful setting. Ways to give. It's the giving part of it. Take your gift or intention and join in the offertory prayer. Divine love. Through me. me blesses, blesses and multiplies. All, all, all that I have. All that I give. And all that I receive. And thank you God. Our ushers, <laughs> Faye and Charlotte, will collect the offertory. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God walks beside me, guides my way through every moment of the day. Yeah. 
Okay then, we are going to do our peace song. The cards, the cards. Yes, are in the back. Okay, so we have a special gift for everyone since we talk, just talked about giving and their cards are in the back and Faye has the cards. Is that right, Faye? And they're the five principles. They look like they're they're the five principles. basic principles. They look like a credit card. And a business card that you can keep in your wallet or your purse. And come on over here. <laughs> Anyone at home listening, please stop in the office Monday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Thursday and pick up your card because it's got all the principles on it and handy little purse or wallet right. or yeah. pocket card. Right. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. Okay. All right. We're ready. Protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. 